Welcome back to our Dan Diving and Health series in which we're talking about decompression sickness. And in this chapter, the second chapter, we'll be talking about the effective use of your dive computer, important precautions, basic guidelines, and specific tips and tricks. Keep watching. Divers are sometimes surprised when symptoms of decompression sickness develop after dives that appear safe according to their dive computers. But remember that the models or the mathematical algorithms reflect an average diver, not necessarily you. In recent years, dive computers have supplanted dive tables as a primary means of regulating dive profiles. And yes, dive computers offer an advantage in that they enable the diver to dynamically establish different compartments of tissues, and we spoke about that in the previous chapter, as controlling compartments as their conditions change during the dive. In reality, however, compartments are really the dive computer's modeling software and they don't really represent an actual body tissue. As long as the guidance they provide results in an acceptable outcome, specifically very little decompression sickness, they are considered adequate. But there are important precautions. While the guidance provided by decompression models can be very useful, it is important for divers to keep in mind that dive schedules, whether presented as dive tables or on the screen of a computer, are limited in what they measure and also on the assumptions on which the model was constructed. Tissue compartments are adjusted. New compartments can be added. Many manipulations may be made to the mathematics of a given computer, but it remains a model. It remains a calculation or algorithm. And that means that depth and pressure are monitored in a way that estimate the risk of decompression illness. They don't guarantee it. It can be impacted by a myriad of real-time factors such as thermal status, exercise intensity, joint forces and a host of individual predispositions that are currently not well understood, let alone quantifiable in terms of their impact on decompression stress. Divers are often surprised when their computers let them down, but we need to know it is not necessarily guaranteed. We refer to these so-called unexpected events as so-called undeserved hits. Now undeserved sounds rather unfriendly. It really means unpredictable or that the mathematical model that is being used by a particular diver did not estimate their risk for decompression illness or decompression sickness adequately. It can be modified and there are ways in which dive computers and dive styles can be tempered by a thoughtful diver. Many divers may be unaware of the fact that different dive computers make use of different mathematical models or versions with different models. There is not necessarily a universal standard. A single manufacturer may use more than one model, possibly in a single type of computer. And this makes it extremely difficult to assess the nuances of every system. But there are some basic guidelines. And these are what we'd like to offer you. How can you make the best use of your dive computer. The following considerations are intended to offer a somewhat light-hearted insight into what your dive computer can 
and cannot do. It is helpful to think of your dive computer in these ways. As a business competitor, master it by learning its strengths and its weaknesses. As a date, it must be turned on for the relationship to work. As a buddy, it should descend and ascend whenever, but only when you do. Don't leave your dive computer at the dive stop while you are already at the surface. It can be considered as a personal assistant, something that reminds you of the rules and schedules you might otherwise forget. It might be thought of as an actor. It recites the lines without having to understand their implications. As a politician, do not necessarily believe everything it tells you. As a hotel concierge, it will help you do what you want, but at a price. Your dive computer can be thought of as a stranger. It knows virtually nothing about your personal reality. It can be considered as a mate. Is it compatible with you and your friends? It can be thought of as a news reporter. It will air your dirty laundry. But most importantly, as a tool to be used appropriately. So here are some tips and tricks in using your dive computer. Push the right buttons. You should know not only which buttons to push to make your computer work, but also which mathematical model or models may be employed in making decompression computations. There is a surprising range in models, from conservative to liberal, and these differences may not be evident at first glance. For example, your computer may establish conservative limits for an initial dive, but liberal limits for repetitive diving. It is best to learn enough about the various available models and derivations before you select a computer for yourself, so that you are sure to choose the one that is most compatible with your own level of acceptable risk taking. Choosing one purely based on familiarity may not be the best strategy. Even if you have had good outcomes on previous dives with a given computer, it does not guarantee that it will be the best one for you throughout your diving future. Accumulating knowledge takes commitment, but informed planning for decompression safety should be a concern. So tune in and turn on. Failing to turn on your dive computer or not to take it with you on a dive, which may sound like a joke, but does happen and can create real problems, is something divers should remember. No computer can factor in the exposure profile of a previous dive if it wasn't there. And any decompression model is invalid unless you start using it when you are fully clean. In other words, fully off-gassed from previous dives. If you forget to take your computer with you on an early dive in a repetitive series, then you are restricted to using the tables for the duration of that series, assuming that you are manually able to compute the exposure of the unmonitored dive. And this may or may not be possible. And do not even think about hanging your computer on the down line during a service interval in an effort to compensate for having forgotten it on an earlier dive. There are many stories about this happening, but it's not a responsible practice. Use your dive computer appropriately. The only person who does not have to worry about taking a dive computer on every dive is the one who uses it only as a data logger, that is, as a record of time and depth information, rather than calculating decompression profiles.
Remember, however, that using your dive computer simply to log your time and depth means that you must then still plan your dive using tables or must recompute your repetitive dive group using different means. You cannot move in and out of relying on your computer's decompression computations unless it has recorded all of your exposure profiles. Remember your computer's limits. Dive computers are wonderful and they carry out programmed mathematical computations but they are blind to many insights that you may not have known about and may occur in between dives. For instance, your dive computer knows nothing about your personal health status, your level of physical fitness or your individual susceptibility to decompression stress. It also knows nothing about thermal stress or the physical efforts during or between dives. The fact that many dive computers display water temperature may suggest that thermal stress is factored into the device's algorithm. That may or may not be the case. Water temperature readings can provide additional information but don't bank on this necessarily being part of your computer algorithm's way of assessing gas uptake and always ensure that you protect yourself with a wetsuit, hoodie, dry suit, gloves or cold undergarments if necessary. More importantly, it is not yet possible to directly compute the differences of thermal status during different parts of a dive even if your computer was able to measure your diver core temperature or skin temperature in key spots. We do know that being warm as opposed to being cool or cold during compression and the bottom phases promotes inert gas uptake which is not optimal and that being warm during decompression promotes elimination which is optimal. While impractical for the comfort loving diver decompression safety is optimized by being neutral or cool during the inert gas uptake phase of the bottom part of the dive and warm during the inert gas elimination phase of the ascent. While the concept of thermal changes on decompression stress are clear, we're still far away from really being able to quantify the effects they have on dive planning. Similarly, while some computers are able to track gas consumption, we have much to learn before this information can be meaningfully incorporated into decompression models. Variations in air consumption can reflect differences in the depth of a dive or in the diver's experience, level of anxiety or the degree of physical exertion. The bottom line is that interpreting the precise physiological impact of the interactions amongst these diverse factors is exceedingly difficult and requires thoughtful practice by divers. Lastly, heed your computer's readings. Divers need to pay attention to their dive computers if the information is to be of any use. Be aware that confirmation bias can promote risky behavior. That is, getting away with a risky exposure once or twice may even eventually catch up with you. It may not only be true for possibly risky dives, but even previously safe dives may not necessarily always have the same low level of susceptibility to decompression stress. So those who wish to worry less about the exposure will have greater peace of mind if they use a computer that employs extremely conservative decompression models. 
it is also important to pay attention to your dive computer. If you are diving with a group, do not forget that there can be considerable variability in the guidance provided by different computers or computers with different settings. That means that it is of significant benefit when diving with others using a similar computer to still nevertheless rely on your own and follow the most conservative directives will certainly most likely be the best choice if there is no other. Those who wish to worry less about their exposure will have greater peace of mind if they choose a computer that employs an extremely conservative decompression model. It is also important to pay attention to your dive computer. If you are diving with a group, do not forget that there can be considerable variability in the guidance provided by different computers or computers with different user selected settings. That means that there is considerable benefit in diving with others who use a computer with similar decompression settings because the discrepancies will be the least. And then one can follow the most conservative directive and it's not too burdensome for the group. But if members of the group use different computer models and each follows their own, it can lead to a breakdown in the buddy system. Don't rely blindly on your computer. Although heeding your computer is important, do not take its advice unthinkingly. The same profile can sometimes be conducted without problems again and again, right up to the dive where it does not prove safe. Divers often try to blame a specific factor such as dehydration for the development of symptoms following one dive but not another. Well, this approach may be true but it's not productive. There are a range of variables in play during any dive and they are rarely identical. There is a probabilistic element to decompression risk. That is, chance can play a role in the manifestation of decompression sickness. And the best approach is to avoid the extremes of either fatalistic resignation or smug focus on a single supposed magic bullet. There are many, many small steps that can make any dive safer. The most important one is to stay within reasonably conservative dive depth profiles and add safety stops to every dive. There are other important steps such as minimizing exercise and so on. And we've spoken about these. There's buoyancy control, not doing yo-yo diving maintaining good hydration, diving conservatively, using a computer and following similar goals to those who follow the similar conservative practices you do. Even adding small margins of safety can all contribute as a security cushion. Dive computers are powerful tools, but sound knowledge of diving physiology good physical conditioning and adherence to thoughtful practices offer the best protection for divers. And if you do develop decompression sickness symptoms, you should take your computer with you when you go for the diving medical evaluation. Some facilities will be able to download and look at the dive profile that you followed and it may be helpful. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe to our channel, offer your comments, advice, insights, recommendations and maybe some of the lessons that you've learned along the lines that we've discussed. Until next time, safe diving.